Yes. Hopefully we have some success with this. We just wanted to get on here with some bread cups and some conversation tonight, switch it up a little bit, make it do something different than we usually do. Um, it's been a minute since we've been on live, right? Yeah, I think we might have been on live last year sometime. Um, and we just was talking for like 45 minutes and somebody said we should start doing like red cup table, red, red cup, cup conversation, red couch situation, something yeah, like that. Yeah, something like that. So we like, I mean, it's Sunday, we didn't have dinner. Mm -hmm. We've been, uh, it's been a minute, like I said, since you guys seen us other than on the vlogs, we've been playing catch up for a minute. Hi Kiki, thank you for joining us. We hope you stick around um, until we get off of live. We was just saying that we haven't been on live in a minute and that we wanted to come with some little adult beverages tonight with our red cups and just sit on live and talk to y'all tonight. Um, yeah. It's been a minute since we've been on live, so we wanted to kick it. Y'all feel free to drop any questions y'all want and we'll do our best to answer them. But we're yeah, gonna start yeah. with some things we got. What you about to say, baby? I said, your boys is live in the flesh. I mean, it's real life. Like, mm -hmm. Y'all talking to us right now. In real time, you know, on video, you may comment and you have, may have to wait until we comment back. But like right now we can answer anything directly. If you have like a specific question, it's kind of easier when we live. Yeah. So <clears throat> I one comment or one conversation that we wanted to um, talk about was how do we feel about having relationships with our exes with family. our ex's family or um, yeah, having a relationship with them like yeah. after we're no longer with that person yeah so we we had this conversation i think we talked a little bit about it but we never like like went into depth about it but we just wanted to get on here and talk about how we feel about relationships with your ex's family um I think I've talked about it. Like I noticed, like, like even like I'm gonna go start with social media. So like on social media, you know how like you get in a relationship with somebody and then y'all start like following each other's family, and then it's like you and the person stop being together, but then mm. the family continues to follow, and then it's like <laughs> they kind of be like watching what you're doing. Uh -huh. I don't know how I feel about it, but it's, I was telling him like it's like I be wanting to know like from my family like if i don't deal with somebody it's like what are y'all still watching them for but it's like i don't know if that's like me being subjective because i'm not with the person um no i agree i mean i agree with you too because it's kind of like to me it's a little weird because it's kind of like i mean i'm still friends with my ex's mom on facebook but i'm not checking for every post she posts or like going on her stories um and that's probably about it because any of my uh, my ex's other relatives i like either unfollowed them or like yeah i didn't block them or anything but just unfollowed them even though i do feel like we did have a strong connection and some people i think their mindset is just like you know they enjoyed the person so it's kind of like your family builds a relationship with your ex in a sense and they become like friends too so it's kind of like everybody don't have that belief system where it's kind of like once you're done with once my family member's done with you, I'm done with you. Like, even yeah. mom, our parents tell us that, like, if we weren't to be together anymore, they would still be there to, like, reach out to. We just aren't those people to kind of yeah. be like, let me call. I think it just will be hard, like, like, I don't, like, it's like, damn, it's like, put me in space. Like, I'm trying to get over that person, but it's like, the mom might be like, oh, I spoke to this person, and you're just like, okay, like. I could say we had kids <laughs> together, but other than that, it's like, I don't really understand why y'all would be talking. I mean, it's not really a bad thing, especially if we didn't, like, end on a bad note and it's still cordial. Like, if we run into each other, it's like, hey, it's all based on, I think, what you want. And, like, if you have a new spouse, what they would have to say about that. True. Because some people don't rock with that. It's kind of like, why are they still connected to the family? But... When you wish, and then I think it's also a time thing too. You could be with somebody for so long and you're, hi, Matthew, thank you for joining. And I think I just seen somebody else. Um, oh, Jody, Jody said, Jody said, I don't want to uh, mispronounce your name. I think it's Jody, but they said uh, they agree as well. But I think it's also when you have so much time spent in a family, it's kind of like that person essentially becomes like family. Like if you, you got to think, We've already been together going on five years. 
Mm-hmm. But we've been associated with family even prior to that, maybe like a year before that. Mm-hmm. So it's like, that's almost like six years. Time keeps accumulating. It's like, damn, I really know this person. So it's like, just to cut them off like that, even, you know, it hurts leaving a relationship. So just imagine how the family feels. But I get yeah. it. I think it's you sh- it's some sort of boundaries you still have to have in place. You do, because then it's like, say you start, say the person, you start messing with somebody new, but your family... You say you've been in a relationship 10 years and your family really like mess with the person and then y'all cut it off and now you start bringing a new person around, but the family invites that person over like, and the new person like, why do you like, it's just like you said, I think it's boundaries and I think it could just get, it could get really complicated. Um, yeah. Even if you got to think about, say like, if you're like if you met your ex through somebody in your family, kind of like your situation, you know, where it's kind of like if you're you're real happy to see you both safe after all that stuff. Yes, we are happy to. We give the most praise and honor mm-hmm. to God. Like it is a privilege to be in His face, and hap- um, that's not permanent either. Like you know, we go through ebbs and flows in life. So I appreciate you saying that. Happy Sunday, fam. Good to see y'all. Been. Been streaming y'all all day. Oh, we love that. Thank you for <laughs> watching. Um, if you have that connection, sometimes it's hard to cut them off. Yes, I absolutely agree. It's kind of like uh, it could be very, very tough. But I think we're babe, or at least from what I'm taking from what you're saying, kind of is like thank you. Uh, Matthew said nice locks. I think <laughs> that's what you meant. Um, we need them done. Yes, they haven't been done, Matthew, since. August since our going away uh, party, which was August 26th, and we got our locks done, I think, August 24th or 25th. 27th. So, 27th. So it's going on. What are we in November 4th right now? So Wait, no. Did we get it? Maybe we got it, it done like two days. Yeah, two or three days before. Yeah, because I think the cookout might have been the 27th or the 28th. Yeah, so we need them done. Uh, it's just a process because we're looking for a stylist. Yeah, when you um, move to a new city, it's kind of. Um, difficult. I mean, and we should have known prior to moving, like, you have to book stylists mm-hmm. months in advance, especially if they're ones that's, like, high there's high demand for them. You really got to make sure you book your appointment because ain't nobody just sitting. They schedule is not just sitting around being open forever. They got clientele that books them up mm-hmm. on a regular, and it's the holiday, so it's even more harder to right. get hair done. But um, to go back to what we were saying, I think it's... To me, it's weird when your ex is, like, watching everything that your family is posting when you're there. Like, when they know you kind of going to be there, like, for the yeah. holidays or... Yeah. And it's like, you really can't control it. I mean, it's just the other person that's really hurting themselves, honestly. Like, if you're going to continue to watch me through my family vicariously, it's like, you're going to see what you're going to see. And that's something that you got to do. I can't, like... Be like, oh my God, this person, why? Or be going to look at the comments to see who liked the video or things like that. Because mm-hmm. I know to this day, my some of my family like still follows my ex. And I'll just be like, is it weird? Or like, like, it's just like, why? But again, I can't control nobody's social media. Um, I never told them, go befriend this person. Like, go add the person on Facebook. That's just a choice that you make. Um, but that so was a topic. You, so take you put yourself in that shoes. Like if your friends, like say you became friends on Facebook with one of your cousins' um, partners, like, mm-hmm. and then they separated, like not on bad terms or anything. Are you gonna like go to their page and delete them? Like no, because I think like you say, like in the moment, it's just like you are not thinking like, oh, I'm gonna cut up. But the person that's going through like the person that's actually cutting off the person yeah you're gonna like oh, i'm gonna block them on social media or whatever because mm-hmm. you're mad or however the situation go but the other family is not thinking about that and i think that's what it is they just be like they never just think about oh well let me go and block them because they're not dealing with that person anymore. they don't no, i don't think I don't they're think thinking so. about it because it's not their situation so exactly just like, it just be like it's nothing to them but when it's yeah. your when it's the your, that specific person situation is kind of like to me, it, I'll just be like, uh, okay. I mean, it's, it don't bother me. Like, it was times when I, some of my friends were still following my ex, you know, and I'm not, I don't, I'm not expecting them to 
go and unfollow that person but also i'm just like i think it would be weird if y'all like interacting on a regular basis because it's like what are y'all talking about <laughs> especially if y'all wasn't really that y'all ain't kick it like that when we was together yeah. it's kind of like, like all right yeah, like, now like what you trying to shoot your shot or something <laughs> not even not coming from that space i get where you like it, not even coming from that space it's kind of just like what do y'all have in common other than me i mean y'all didn't really communicate like that but mm-hmm. if y'all communicated when we was together and I could see, oh, say they, they build a solid relationship. So I don't really, it's not a big deal. Yeah. I am still friends with my family member X because I have nothing to do with what happened with, I'm still, oh wait, I'm still, oh, uh, 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 I almost, uh, I'm mean? still friends with my family member X because I have nothing to do with what happened with them. I agree with that to an extent. Like, I feel like if it ended on bad terms, I'm just the type to... Like, I'm riding with my family, so, like, if the person did something to cause hurt, harm, or pain today, my family member, I'm not kicking it with you. I'm big on loyalty in that area, and everybody's different, so Mm -hmm. I understand that. But if it was no bad blood or nothing like that, I don't see anything wrong with you still getting involved. Now, if your cousin say, you know, if your family member or whoever, like, asks you, come to you personally and, like, hey, cuz, could you, like, not... Do that? Yeah. yeah, if they come here and say it. But again, this is all subjective. Yes. We just wanted to throw out a topic mm-hmm. where nobody's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. It's whatever you feel, that's what the f- you gonna do. Um, Ooh. But <laughs> not like that, but oh. I'm just saying like whatever we feel is what people are gonna do, not to be like... <laughs> oh. No, I wasn't What's like... Getting, big I wasn't getting like... Oh, frustrated. Someone and DNM said, um, no cut ties, that's it. I mean, yeah, that's why we say it's subjective because most people, I mean, at least the people I know, they like, I'm not dealing with my um, ex's family members. Depending on, a, it's circumstantial. I think it's very circumstantial. That's why I say, because if it was no bad blood, it's like, hey, you cool, we're, we're cordial, but I'm not about to be down, yeah. Yeah, she said facts. I like that. Yeah, I'm not about to be in your DMs or acting like we the best of friends when you don't mess with my peoples like that no more. It's like if I run into you somewhere, it's like, hey, what's up? But I ain't about to be like running you down on who my cousin's with now. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Being uh, messy. (laughs) (laughs) Boy, that fake laugh. That was serious. I always saw him that, y'all. That that. was serious. No. (laughs) I was dead serious. Do it again. <laughs> That's how I know it's fake because you just did it again. <laughs> Anywho. No, that is very... Like, I feel like that's a big thing, though, because it's kind of... Oh, what do you think about parents doing it then? Because it's one thing you have, like, well, family Well, that's what I'm saying. My parents still follows Mine's my ex, and I'm just like... Mine's do too. Ugh, like, why? Like, yeah. why? Or even commenting on their stuff, like... Why are you commenting on liking? We could say we being a little petty too, y'all, because it, yeah, we could be being a little petty because it's kind of like I'm not going. I still interact. I do. I I mean, I even told you I still interact with my um, my ex's mom, but on a certain basis, it's kind of like she'll say, "Hey," like if I post something, she might be like, "You look handsome, son," because she still calls me son. Or I'll just be like sending my condolences. Like they recently had death in their family, and I sent my condolences to her. But other than that, I might heart a picture or something, but I don't really overstep anything out of respect for him and him like my ex and sean um just to keep it clear but i think we also talk about i want to get into us talking about like um like supporting our ex's family when they have like a a, a loss in the family like going and show it and showing up and being there when you like built a relationship kind of with the person that may have passed away so what's your question well, it's it just kind of like oh, a dialogue like about it. About like, it? what is your thoughts about that? And what are y'all thoughts about that? Like, if you were close <coughs> with somebody um, in your ex's family and they, uh, unfortunately, God forbid, like, have passed away or if you experienced that, tell us what was your experience or, like, if that was the case, would you feel like if you're in a relationship, it's, like, out of line <coughs> to show up and go support your ex or just go, like, sing? I guess be there. Yeah, basically support. Um... I think, like, if you had a really close connection with the person, like, mm-hmm. you know, some, now, let me, don't get me wrong, some people be in a relationship and they just not really family orientated with your family. So I wouldn't expect that person to, like, come to your family thing. But if you're, like, really close with the person and, mm-hmm. like, something happens and you happen to hear about it, 
I would say show up, but I just it could just go either way. Like it could be like you come in, a person could be like, "What the f like? What is you doing here? Like you got the you got the audacity to come here." So it could go kind of like uh, you gotta weigh your options. But I would just say go to your support, or mm -hmm. even just reach out and just if you have some type of connection, social media, or you know somebody in the family, just say I'm sending my love. Um, but I think it's like, like I don't think it was something I would get bad at. If you decided, like, say for some reason you yeah, had to do that, it would just did. be like, I probably wouldn't go from my situation because the way it ended, I just feel like me coming in, it's just going to be like, like, he, like, what is he well, doing? Well, not here? just showing up unexpectedly. I'm saying, like, having a conversation with the person, like, hey, is it okay if I send, oh. a, something, send a card or something? That's also, I agree with that. That's, is that's that's a good gesture too. I think that's a nice gesture. Yeah, you you don't even have to really. I mean, it just it's, it's all that subjective too. It's like if you really felt close to this person, like I said, where we it's I mean it's not un, like unusual. You get connected with your uh, part, uh, really ex partner's do. family, and they become like your extended family. Like you, especially if you spend a lot of time with them, and you were with somebody that was like really family oriented. Yeah, and sometimes. I'm speaking for myself. Sometimes we like, like his family, like Shai's family, it's some of them that I feel closer to, like, than my own family. So it's like, sometimes when you're in a relationship with people, you like meet the family and y'all really, you really start kicking mm -hmm. it with the aunt or the uncle and you be like, yo, that's really my aunt or the grandparents. And you be like, I really love them. Like, it, mm -hmm. sometimes they kind of replace other people that may have passed away or they just get you different. Like, they just make you feel more comfortable. There's no judgment. There's so many different things that go into it. So I do agree mm -hmm. with you. Like, I love my baby's family. Like, they welcome me yeah, and we just too. vibe. Like, he don't even have to be there yeah. for me to be in the presence. Like, it'll be like, what? Sean, what you? Like, why they are you be here? Reaching out, they at? reach out to him. I mean, they be texting my baby, checking up on him. I mean, he yeah. do the same with them, too. Without me even having to be a part of the conversation, and I love that, and vice versa, like same with his um, family and his cousin's wife and stuff. Like we have our own relationship, we have each other's numbers and stuff like that. So that was just a thought, and we wanted to ask, like, get some feedback and wonder if some people be thinking the same things we thinking. Um, I know you had something else you wanted to go into too. You got oh well, yeah, um, well, the my list phone is, is on up your there. Phone. <laughs> um, but another thing I had up there, so. What well, do y'all want to know? Yeah, Drop some like, questions. Ask us some questions as well, too. It'll pop up when they come. Uh, I think you can. I, well, when I tried to hit it, it almost went like... See, I hit the... Like, if you click on the thing... Some what messages. Is. Uh, if you... Um, okay. Yeah. So, that's the last... That was the last comment. So, you okay. can just constantly... All right. Um, um, so... We are watching a show called Love is Blind. Mm. And uh, when I say the show, if you don't know Love is Blind is on Netflix, they're on season three. three. Yeah. Um, we're waiting for episode nine to come out. They're about to get, you know, do the marriage thing. But um, me and Babe picked up this show a while ago. First, it was The Ultimatum, I think. And then Love is Blind came out. But basically, um, we've learned so much through the show because um, I was telling him, like, it's so much, I think it's so easy to like judge or like give your pain on another couple's like what they're going through. Relationship or their relationship. situation. Yeah. yeah, like if you're watching it and you see like their body language and them getting mad at each other or them arguing about something, it's so easy to like give your opinion. But when you're in their shoes or you're in the moment, mm -hmm. you don't think about that. And so we're watching the show and yesterday the lady um, said something to the guy that it really stuck with me. Um, because I guess they got home and he bait like she went to his house for the first time and everything was just a mess. Like clothes here, dishes in the sink, stuff all over the couch. A, it, it was, was a nets mess. It had nets in the toilet. Mm. Um and she asked him, like, did you ever have chores as a kid? And I was like, yo, that is so interesting because I think by her asking him that and him basically saying no. It kind of showed for itself, like maybe he never had the mom that said, "You need to like wash your dishes, or you need to like put your clothes in the laundry." Um, maybe somebody was always doing those things, and I think it's really good to ask your partner or when you're in a relationship with somebody, like, what are some of the things you like? What are what are your chores? What are your like? Um, 
what are your pet peeves? Like things like that. Cause sometimes we don't know that. And then you move in with somebody, you kind of, it could create a big argument. It's like, you live like a slob. And it's like, I'm not used to that. So when they ask that question, I was telling them, like, yo, that is a really good thing that people should ask when they're like, what are your chores? What are things that you had to do as a child? Um, because it really shows in your life. Like if you weren't doing, you know, you didn't have right, to watch Tony, your laundry. Thank you for joining. Tony. Oh, what's up, Tony? Um, but I was saying, like, if you didn't have to, like, make your bed, you didn't have to, like, brush your teeth at night. It's things that when we do it as kids repetitively, like, as we grow up, we just do it, like, second nature. Like, it's nothing to, to think, think it, about. It, it, yeah, well, it depends. Because that's, I, I was sitting here listening to you, and I'm like, it depends on how your parents presented it to you as well, too. Because some kids were, had chores. And they hated them. And mm -hmm. when they got on their own space, it's like, I'm going to do it when I want to. Or I'm going to leave my house the way I want yeah. to. Because I don't have nobody over my head telling me, do this, do this, do this. It's like, I have freedom. I could let my clothes pile up and wash them when I get ready to. So those, I mean, them could be the, the same people that's nasty too. Because they had to clean up all their life that they were. Then you have some people, what you're talking about, like it's it's been instilled in them so much. And put down their brain that it just became like a habit. Like, I have to clean. I have to make my bed. I, it's just, uh, it's in them now. Yeah. So, yeah, it makes sense. But it just, in, in a relationship from what we were seeing, it could easily cause uh, an argument because mm -hmm. the female was kind of really, like, aggressive with it, though, at first, kind of yeah, just like... Yeah, like, he was stupid. Like, you, she, he put his uh, socks in the laundry. Like, you know how you, like, use your socks and then you, okay, like... Okay, so we talking about two different couples. Well, the one the one that was messy was uh, Zeneb Zeneb and uh, the other guy, and you talking about right now. You talking about Nancy and Bartiz because she was saying like, well, I think I was just using that like him putting the laundry in the thing like with the socks rolled up. It's like how are they gonna wash? So I was like, I wonder if he ever washed clothes. But oh yeah, but you can go back to that one. Um, what the other guy that. Basically, she did say, like, did you have chores? Like, what did you do as a kid? No, I was just wondering, like, like how a person can be just so critical. I mean, just talking about how you could be so critical in a relationship. Well, let me go back to... I'll come back to that. Yes, me and my baby been together 10 years, and I wish I would have asked a lot of questions before we moved in together. But along the way, it was a lot of disagreements and all that, but we worked it out over time. Yeah, I think that is very important because it's like... You don't you don't know what you don't know until you ask. And when you mm -hmm. ask, it's like before you I think so often our first instinct is just kinda like question a person or be like, How don't you know this? When it's kinda yeah. like we don't sit back and think like maybe their upbringing wasn't it's, it wasn't the way that ours was and it might sound so strange to a person that was always taught that, but it's like it's people really out here in this world that are not taught how to wash properly or how mm -hmm. to shower or wash their clothes or make dinner it's like the things that might be so small to us it's like people really are out here not knowing how to do these things so i think it just takes patience and it doesn't happen overnight because we are humans and shit i mean me and sean even have times when we get irritated with each other about things and it just helps us learn each other better mm -hmm. through um like taking that time out to communicate but what you have to want to learn about your partner, because um, it could be a choice to just be critical too. <laughs> Some mm -hmm. people just like enjoy being that person to just yeah. like always have something negative to say about their spouse instead of trying to get to know them and why they act the way they do. Yeah, it's really good to like go back into like deep dive conversations, like challenge, like learn about your partner, like no ask them what they did as a kid. Like I think when you really interview basically them you learn so much more about like what they went through, like mm -hmm. why they do things that they do, but you gotta really care and wanna do it. Like you can't just <coughs> do it because you feel like, oh, it's the right thing that I should do. Really care, cause you'll really learn a lot. Mm -hmm. um, because upbringing really does have a lot on. It's a huge impact yeah. on who you are become as an adult. It is, but I do wanna say, I'm glad that y'all all have worked it out. Um, keep working at it, you know. I think when people get together, they don't like in, like have these conversations. They just look at looks and certain things or whatever. But I think it's good to ask these conversations like before you move in, like how do you keep your house? Like what are your standards for your house? Like what is something that you do daily like before you move in? Because once you move in and it's like, oh, 
Like, but that's a good point you made too. I'm gonna read this comment and then go back to what you just said because that was um, very. I'll message her. Matt just said something. If you hang around a person, the real person will come out and show some red flags. Yeah, it's only it's only so long you can Ooh. fake the funk, and that's what I you made it. That's just you you just helped me go into my point. I was just about to make where. A person can easily you can ask them before meeting them and they can tell you what you want to hear. Yeah. You know, I mean, we all know that we've been we've been on dates and stuff before, so <laughs> a person can try to woo you and tell you all these good things about themselves until you really live or stay with them for a long time, and the thing has to eventually reveal itself. So yes, Matt, it's like it's only but so long a person can pretend to be this person that they're mm -hmm. not before their true character comes out, the way they really live comes out, the way they manage money really comes out. So it's, it, it, that is facts for real, for real. Yeah, it is because it's like a impression. Like you you doing what you do to either because either you want to bang, like you want to get some, yes. or you just trying to, you trying to get your knees met. So in order to get my knees met, I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to make it seem like this. And then, you know how they say it's the honeymoon phase. And then after that, <laughs> you start to see like, Oh, this this what this what this like I did all of that for this. Um This is really who you yeah. are. Wow. Now it's like you didn't you two years Cat in or you a year and a half in, it's like now that you you in love now you didn't y'all did the do and it's kinda like now you, it, your feelings are involved, so it's now it's a little bit kind it's a little harder to leave mm -hmm. versus if you really got to like that's why I think it's also good to it's so good to see you guys. It's so good to see you too, Melvin. I I just appreciate you so much because you always send us so much love and support. Don't think that anything that you do goes unnoticed because like you are very like a name that stands out yes. every time me and Sean see you, whether it's a DM or a comment, it's always love. So we appreciate you. Yes, this guy all Melvin always comments on a video. He always just sends us DMs randomly, like, mm -hmm. how are you guys doing? Like, he's always checking in on us. Um, and we appreciate you again, Melvin, because you really do. You are a true subscriber. <laughs> Tony said they always tell you the they always tell you the they always tell you the good part when you first meet them, but when you really get to know them, what the rest of the comments say? When you oh, first it won't meet let you them, see. But when you wanna, he just that's think that's all he put. Oh. And if you want to go meet. deeper into that, Tony, because we only got partial of what you said. Until you get to know them. I think it, the whole comment came out when I just hit that. Let me go back to the rest of the comments. Oh, Matt said, when we are in love, sometimes we put the blinders oh, yeah. on. Oh, yeah. Like, nah, we act naive. Like, we yeah. don't want to. We didn't. We see get all the signs, and we just act like it, it's, it's not true. Uh, back to the... Yvette said, hi, guys. I saw you. My two best friends, Alec and Brian. I love you guys. Hi, Sean. You're so beautiful. You too, Chocolate. Thank you. We appreciate it. What you trying to go back? Oh, I thought like if you click on it. it I did too, but up. it's not doing that. Thank um, you for that. Oh, uh, yeah. We was definitely you, with Alec and Brian. Those are our bros for real, for real. Like they, we've been talking, we've been in communication behind the scenes too. A lot, like a lot. We've been talking about talking to them mm -hmm. a lot before we even got together. So it's been the connection that we've built with each other off of YouTube. Um, and you guys just don't get to see it. But we talk to them a lot. We was actually just talking to them yesterday. Yeah. Um, so you will see us with them again. But we really enjoyed them. Yeah. They're our favorites too. Yeah. They. I think this was something when me and Shai started YouTube. This is our second year, right? What? With YouTube. Our third year. When? Like YouTube, being on YouTube. Now? Yeah. No, we way past. We about to so it's maybe third. Years, third year. Nineteen, twenty, two, one, two, two. It's about to be going on four. Okay, so basically what I was gonna say was when me like maybe last year me and Babe was like, we really wanna like meet like a couple on YouTube, like we really wanna like start like having couples like as friends. And I'm just thinking about it like it just dawned on me this moment. Well like, in general, yeah. yeah, like outside of we just was saying that we wanted couples friends in general. Yeah, and I just felt like actually meeting a couple like that we watched on YouTube and like we never thought that we would meet them and it's like, oh my God, we met our first YouTube couple. Like that also does we content. never thought we'd meet them. Them too. Like, I just, I mean, at I, I once it was just a thing. Like, I didn't know exactly where they lived at or things like that. And I'm just like, it's the first uh, couple that we actually, we watch and we met them, like, in person. Mm. So. <laughs> My baby's so cute. 
<laughs> Y'all don't mind me sometimes. I just, when I ask Sean questions, I be needing clarity for myself sometimes because maybe he he might say something that I don't think or I don't know and then I vice versa. Like, I might say something and Sean's like, oh, oh you okay. know I do that regularly. Yeah, He's so like, say something. For me, I'm just like, <laughs> okay, I guess. Um, I did see another comment. Oh, no, this love from you too, Melvin. We appreciate that. They said, it's oh, S&S. It's S. S. It's S&S. S and S. S. This is getting it's good. S &S. Let me make another drink. S. Yes. Oh, yeah, go ask, pour up. Feel free to ask some questions too, y'all. We want to yeah. communicate back and forth with you guys too. It's like we came with some things to talk about too that was just on the top of our head, but we really wanted to come just communicate a dialogue back and forth with you guys because it's been a minute since we got on live. Like we do video so much and we don't really have yeah. that much talking points mm -hmm. but it's this is fun for us yeah. we, we 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 talk about going live so much but it just be like when we gonna actually sit down and find the time to actually do it so here we are because honestly y'all wasn't gonna get the live because we tried three times and it kept saying Chad. the live was not connecting i don't know if that was the devil or something trying to like not let us get on live but we was like we not gonna let it frustrate us let's just try to switch phones and we're here so Mm -hmm. It's just like when you really want to do something, sometimes things come into place, but don't give up. Like push past it because I think it's just something trying to see do you really want to do it and are you I just going to give up ooh, that easy? You can find a listen to everything, child. That is, that's true. Like like how bad do you want it? Do you yeah. really, do, are, are you, you going to try to troubleshoot to this or are you just going to be like, you know what? That's the story <laughs> of a lot of our lives. <laughs> So I feel like we, we were talking about something else and I feel like I can't remember exactly what it was, but that's what I'm telling you guys to fill in. Um, I'm, we were talking about talking about other things. I'm saying the notes that you oh, made. That's why I'm... Um, it was like friendships. Uh... Are you guys going to vote? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we just, uh, we literally just moved. So, I mean, that honestly is not on our mind it. and we aren't even familiar with who is in what position in yeah. Florida right now. Like I'm we've been dealing politics. with so much, honestly, voting is the last thing we've been thinking about. That's full transparency. Yeah. I've never voted Miguel before. Seals. I mean, you saying that very proudly. Oh. I vote, but I mean, that's his truth. <laughs> Hi, Miguel. Uh, Joanne said, "How long have you been have you been together, and you, are you are you guys married yet?" You need to put um, a ring on it. Don't do that. <sighs> no, we not married. Sean is a hot ass mess. <laughs> That's but we've is. been together. Um, on, on paper, we've been together since 2018. It'll be five years in March. Um, but. We've known yeah. each other since 2014. So. No. Oh, you know me since 2014 now. Because if any of you OGs know the video, our original video of how we met, Sean claimed we know each other right off the bat. So I... I don't remember. We, well, we didn't... We met in when I first started cause at um, our old company. Well, I could say the company. All right, I lost. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got lost. Um, we started at... Yeah, we, we met in 2014. Like, we seen each other for the first time in 2014. Let's just say that. Mm -hmm. We started to get to know each other, I would say, in 2016. Yeah. 2017, we started really, like, kicking it. Kicking it. 2018 is when we committed to each other. Um. Yes, Melvin, check out. Are you talking about Love is Blind on Netflix? Please do. Um. I know this before you guys moved to <laughs> Jay Florida. Said, um, you would eat quite a bit. So, have you found a favorite restaurant since you moved to Florida? Nah, uh, no, I we haven't really been out like that. I don't. I wouldn't say I don't, I don't have no favorite restaurant. I believe you should go out and vote. Is your rights? Um, I think that's. Um, I respect your opinion, but I think that's also our preference. If we would like to vote to vote or not. That's why we don't usually ask poli answer political mm -hmm. questions. We'd rather just not answer it because people like to give their opinion on what they think people should do. And I think we all should just do what is best for ourselves. Yeah. But we appreciate that. But 
um, like we said, we have so we have had so many things going on previously that voting was the last thing that we thought about registering for for this state. So, um, and that's not even something that we even have to go into greater detail with. We yeah. just we haven't been that hasn't been on our mind. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I think we answered that question about how long we've been together. Um, marriage is something that we've talked about, but we're just yeah. Sean was being playing. immature about it, but we yeah, have was goal, we have things that a marriage is not something you rush into. Um, mm -hmm. It's not something that should be taken lightly. Look at Blossom doing her having her yeah, debut in Blossom. the camera. Um, it's not something that is taken lightly. Yeah, time matters. How much time you spent with somebody, but I think it's up to the two individuals and when they feel like it's time for them to lock it in that way with each other. It's some people do it in a year, some people do it in three years, some people do it in three months, some people do it when they first meet after a month. So it's kind of like a thing that has to be in alignment yeah. with each other, not just one person's decision. So it do because even watching the show, like you'll see on Love Is Blind, it's like the people get married, they propose and then they get married supposedly in four weeks, and it's like we learn through the show, like like they we hear the parents always say marriage is not easy. Like you can't just walk out of a marriage and say I'm done and I'm yes. leaving like like you can't just tell them it's over like you know how in a relationship boyfriend and girlfriend or whoever however it is you can just say oh I'm done and like break it off marriage like you can't just walk away especially when y'all have things together so we're learning a lot from the show and I like you said I think we have individually things to work on things as a couple to work on mm -hmm. and why rush into a marriage when it's the foundation is already challenging yeah we ain't ain't gonna be picture perfect when we get married but we already we know right now that there are things that we can improve on so marriage is there it's just it's not right now but we already married without the rings without a piece of paper yeah because marriage does not define the level of our relationship it just only yeah legit i mean legally you know there's so many things that comes with it yep you should take your time before marry it's very serious marriage it is, is very very serious because some people get married and be what like, is the divorce yeah. rate <laughs> or people get married thinking that that stops all your problems nothing goes away because you said y'all marry all those things all those things y'all don't talk about it's still there it's not like marriage just makes all that go away yeah, it's just I, that I'm, you I'm, I'm pro opinion. marriage though. Like I'm, I'm yes. not against marriage. I love people that feel like they want to lock in their relationship and take it to the next level. Um, is that a thing that's going to happen for us? Absolutely, marriage is on our list. Um, it's just on our time and on God's timing too. Yeah, we'll know when we feel like that. Um, and it's, we're not putting no pressure on ourselves either. I don't know if Sean is, but I'm. I'm no. not putting any pressure on myself because I feel like I'm still young and learning myself and I want to make sure that I'm in a space where I can mentally, physically, and emotionally be there for someone else as well as for myself. But I have to be there for me first and make sure I'm good, I'm healed in the, in my um, inner child and things like that and just in a space where I can approach marriage from a different angle because I feel like a lot of us don't, like a lot of people don't. When they go into it, it's just from a space of like unhealedness and just doing it for the sake of. Sometimes it could just. I know. I mean, everybody people. have their own reasons. I'm not going to say it's just for. It's it's all negative because it's positives to marriage too. Yeah. So it's I'll some, just say that it's pros and cons. Yeah. As to as being not married, is, it has pros and cons too. Because maybe if something happens to your spouse, is people that, I mean, you really can't have any say so yeah. unless you have a will or things put in place for that too or if you have a family that's going to respect the partner that's still living yeah. or you mm -hmm. know that's the only thing that i like that i didn't know about marriage that i learned is basically like he said like just because me and him are together something god forbid something happens to anybody i don't want to use this as an example but say you're in somebody's in a relationship and something happens to the person and y'all not married they could not let you go back. Like, you basically don't have no say-so unless the family kind of, like, allows you to. So it's kind of like when you're not married, it's just like you kind of just like a regular person. Like, you could say, yeah, that's my boyfriend and that's my girlfriend the whole time. They don't care about that. They want to know who's the parents, who's this. So it's like, oh, wow, damn, I didn't even know that was a, a thing. I want y'all to go and look at, it's a movie called, um, I think it's called, 
bride. I'm about to type it in right now for y'all. Bridegroom. Um, I don't know if y'all can see my phone. Um, could we type it's it probably a little though? blurry, but um, I don't know. But it's it's bride spell. I can spell it out. It's B R I D E G R O O M, and it's a documentary about um two two gay guys that are in a committed relationship, and I'll let y'all see the rest. But it's basically what Sean just said. Basically, it happened in the documentary, and I won't tell y'all the rest of it. Uh, I highly encourage you guys to go watch it. It's from, it actually came out in 2013. It's a documentary. It's an hour and 21 minutes long. And, um, yeah, that was, I don't know if, I think I, I said I wanted to watch it with you before, but I feel like we watched it. Or maybe, no, we, we couldn't have because I feel like it's a, we would have had a discussion about it and you would have been a little bit familiar with it. But I don't know if it's, um, I don't think it's on Netflix. <coughs> I used, I seen it. You see, I'm dated from 2013. It was actually on TV, on cable back then. But if you have a fire stick, um, it should be on there. But if you type it in on Google, it should tell you like what streaming platforms it's on. Oh, it is on Netflix. Oh, it's on Netflix. Um, yeah, I mean, from YouTube, it said um, it was on Netflix. And now just check because they could, you know, sometimes Netflix take uh, documentaries and movies away. So check YouTube for it too. It could be, the full thing could be on YouTube or um, or on a streaming platform. I know it's on Amazon Prime. If you have that, you might be able to watch it or you might have to pay for it, but it's a really good watch and y'all see what we're talking about. So marriage is can be very important when you face with situations like what you were just talking about. I think that's true. Yeah, that's but deep. we also want an extravagant wedding too. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that. So it's kind of like, hold up, we can't rush that because we want to make sure finances is good. And I know they say that'd be like one of the biggest bills of people, sometimes more than what people pay for their house. Yeah, they say people, and I, people pay a lot. Like they really go all out for their wedding. Like I think now, like being at so, a couple weddings, like, I think the food and the dinners and all that, people really be paying like hundreds of dollars for a plate. So it's like when you don't show up or you really are told to come and you don't RSVP in time, it, when weddings be like forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. Miguel, it like, might be, uh, sorry, babe. It might be. Do y'all have a favorite author that you read? Um, I like Joe Dispenza. Yeah, babe has been obsessed with Joe Dispenza lately. Hmm. Joe is J-O-E Dispenza. Um... D I S P E N Z A. Um, I'm watching the. I'm watching. I'm reading a book right now called "Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself." Um, and I'm still on like the fourth or fifth chapter. Like, I, like I really can't read a book. Like, like just read it. I gotta like really read it and then wait a chapter. Like try to like analyze it because if I just read a book, just reading it, I won't retain. In my mind, I don't think I retain a lot. So I kind of read books slow because I want to make sure I understood what I read. And for me, I don't know if I have a favorite right now, but my current read that I need to get back into is called Set Boundaries and Finding Peace by Nedra Twab. Um, that's what I'm currently reading. Yes, I want a big wedding to somewhere erotic. Yes, weddings are a bank breaker, but it's usually worth it. But it's best to set a budget and stick to it. I was told, yes, I agree with that. Set a budget. It's like, set a budget and really, is like, I guess, make a list and check off, like, what's really important to you and, like, what can mm -hmm. go, can really go and wait. Like, because at the end of the day, we're giving to the people that, like, it's a privilege, privilege for the people that's actually coming because it's kind of like, I know from our standard, we was kind of like... I mean, some people make people pay for plates, but for me, I mean, me and Sean have to keep continuously talking about that. Um, but it's kind of like also us honoring our friends and family, you know, people that share this love experience with us. It's kind of like, get, to me, I feel like the people that's coming is getting more of the benefit than the people that's actually getting Yeah, because you like, have like open bar. And yeah, you have they get spoiled. But yeah. I mean, they also, that's where you, 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 the get, I'm, Slur my time. words. The the yeah. The guests should be spoiling you and gifts. I feel like really extravagant gifts because, I mean, if you have, I mean, I know I got some generous friends, so I know when we get all get married, we are gonna be generous like, on the gifts because like, if you, a plates alone for food be like a hundred and something yeah. plus per plate. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like if you got a lot of people coming, 
you spending a check. But yeah, there are ten people is already a thousand. Ten people is already a thousand dollars. Donation tees. I'm hollering. <laughs> um, Somebody he asked five questions. Yeah. Larry said, "What are five most important things that keep your relationship strong?" Uh, one I'd say is communicating. Uh, communicating. The one thing I could say is um, not letting. Don't be so public with your relationship. Meaning, like, if you're dealing with something with your spouse or your partner, mm. try to solve it. Like, talk to them. I think. In my past relationships, I know that's where I kind of like went wrong. Before I even told the person how I felt that I was with, I would just go to a cousin, a friend or whatever and like get advice or like go on about the person. In this relationship, till this day, I noticed that when I talk to him or we have a conversation about what we're going through or something that I might be mad about, it usually gets resolved. And if it don't get resolved, it's just something that I won't share because you just never know who you're talking to. And what that does for that person. Some people really envy your relationship. So when they get the chance that you're letting them in on something that y'all going through, they can take that and use it as bait. Or not bait, but they can really take that and get into your head about, oh, no, you shouldn't allow this or allow that. So one thing I would say is just be careful who you let in on your relationship. Number three is, I would say, is uh, what's helping us personally is kind of, coming to each other uh not basically like not letting time pass before when we have an issue or something like that we try to talk do our best to talk within like 24 hours or something like that to really talk about it and really get to the core of it uh fourth thing is kind of really like being there to support each other when it's to, where we see each other's doing bad or lacking and it's kind of like we pick each other up when we down like whether that's like an emotional loss or a financial loss or I mean, literally anything that we can do to help each other is we pride ourselves on doing that. We're not perfect. We yeah. just do our best. So, I mean, I don't know if we could even have a whole list of five things because some things are just natural and some things are just, I mean, natural to the point we don't even think about them. Like, yeah. we're not like, oh my God, I'm doing exactly this. But some things we do, we are intentional about doing and we really make like it our duty to stick to it but i don't want to miss i would say the last question. one while he's pulling that up is just listening um making sure that we're listening to each other like when we're talking i think that really helps because um at times you know when y'all like going through something or y'all like going back and forth if you're just responding out of like response you really we not do listening. that we do it but we notice that it doesn't get us nowhere it just makes Nobody's being heard. When y'all going back and forth and you're not giving time for what your person said to process, you're basically just talking out of like, you're just talking. You're not listening to anything. So I would say another thing is listen to your partner. Like, let each other talk. Stop trying to over talk. Stop allowing your ego to kind of like take over and try to control the situation. Just listen to the person. Maybe y'all got to come back and talk about it. Um, I know that's another big thing for me is listening because sometimes I don't listen. I just hear or I hear a word and I respond to that instead of listen to the whole thing that they said and stop being triggered by simple little words. Miguel said, yes, weddings is very expensive even if it mm -hmm. is the smallest ones. Yes. Uh, Matthew said, mine is... Ralph L is the so invisible man. Can okay. you give us some insight on what is that like? What is it about? What is what is the invisible man about? <laughs> the donation yeah, tees really got me cracking up. Um, Matthew said, "I have seen YouTubers break up a lot of couples. Be a lot of couples. Be careful. We appreciate that, but we're also not. We're we are a couple first outside of YouTube. So I think a lot of people get together and they do it for YouTube or for the internet. We've been each with each other prior to the internet, and we know that some people do get together and they're good until they get on the internet. But that's another thing I would say we pride ourselves on. Like before anything, we'll get rid of YouTube if it's we feel like it's affecting our relationship. So that's mm -hmm. why Sean said we don't. We're not. I'm glad we were born in like the last kind of like the last generation of like having a life before the internet because we we really stick to that and being private and what we share and just run into the internet for every single thing. Like we actually deal with our prior problems in private and like 
will we're open to some questions that people might ask us. But like Babe said, you just don't tell a person every single thing because some people aren't always acting with the best intention. So we're careful with what we share. Mm -hmm. We protect what we have. And um, if people do break up, we never know the reason behind either. It's not solely just based on YouTube. Maybe they just weren't a match. And I'm, I respect that too. I respect when people just leave a relationship and not just sticking together for the sake of a YouTube channel. Like, your life is at stake. You really have to choose your peace and really, like, choose you. So if that means separating from a person, then, hey, it is what it is. But I understand what you, where you're coming yeah, from yeah, when you made that back. comment. Thank you for reassuring, reminding us. Uh, from, ther from, from couple therapy, listen, wait, then speak. Mm. Yes. Thank and, you, D. D and I'm sweet, Candle. sweet. Uh, Matthew, we don't want to keep calling you Dean of Sweet Candles too. Do you want us to address you as something else too? Because I know that might sound funny. Matthew said the book is about how people see you or don't see you. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Check might that have out. Check it out. You said the Invisible Man. Let's see. Yeah, oh, Invisible the Man. Invisible Ralph man. Ellis. I'll put that in my phone. Save that because um, your boys been used to be some avid readers, but we've been slacking a little bit. But we gonna get back to it. Um, yes. Do you guys journal? Do any of you journal like the Invisible Man book? Oh, Ralph Ellis. There we go. Um, that was a big thing that um Sean and I would do prior to moving. I think I want. I, I've been looking for a good a new journal too with like a lock on it. I like my journals. Like my other journal had like I could like close it up. Not like a lock, but you could kind of like close it and latch it. A latch, but. Journaling is another big thing, but that was a really good question. Five things that we like mm -hmm. do in our relationship. My name Malcolm and my boyfriend name is Demetrius. Okay. Hey Demetrius, Tell hey Demetrius Malcolm. Say hello. We appreciate y'all for watching. If y'all watching it together, or if you just watching it, Malcolm, we appreciate you for being here. But um, any more questions? Because we all uh, we have been on here for yeah, like fifty two minutes now. We said thirty minutes, but. We just didn't know how it was going to go, but yeah. we are going to get off, like, if y'all don't have any more questions. Mm -hmm. um, let us know, and if you are watching this, if you're not watching it live and you go back and watch it, or if you're watching it live, let us know how you guys feel about the little table talk, well, table talk, the what red, you call it, the red, red, red cup, cup conversations. conversations. After dark. After dark, let us know what y'all think, because then... Should we continue we, it? Yeah, like, should do y'all think we should continue it, because we can do our best to incorporate this, maybe... Once a month or like a, a, we don't upload that Sunday. Or every other Sunday. Yeah, let us know what y'all think. Um, and then we could like kind of like come up with like y'all can better send questions. They, send questions. No, I would I would really like for you guys to send us questions, and if you you can go check our um, I think it's contact or info or something like that, and it has our email. Or if you're not following us on Instagram, you should be. At the Sean and Shy show. And if you already are, we appreciate you. But you'll always DM us on there with your questions. And just put four Red Cup conversations or four After Dark conversations. And we'll know exactly what it's for. Yeah, and then we can just go ahead and uh, write them down. And then uh, we'll Oh, we'll have them on the phone. Yeah, I'm like saying you like, pull. well, once, oh yeah, you're right. Well, like you could I'm just go about. to them. Yeah, like we won't not miss them. Like once you send them, we'll have them. And then mm -hmm. we'll talk about them. But yeah, let us know. Um, and we appreciate all of y'all. Malcolm said, "Good times. I need more of these. We do, we we need we we need this just as much as you guys do. We just needed some like a moment to decompress and really relax. It's been so tough, as you guys all well know. Um, if you don't know, if you also if you're new here, welcome. Like we forgot to say that because we welcome are on live. I think we just out of our normal routine when we record, but." Um, we really are in a better, much better space. I won't say it's perfect because we still are human and we have ups and downs, but, um, we appreciate you guys for constantly checking on us, the ones that did and really just supporting us and tuning in when we do go live. Cause this was so unplanned. Yeah. We said, uh, well, next time we'll like let y'all know, like probably a day before or something like we're going to go live at this time so that you're prepared. You could be home with your cup, mm -hmm. chilling, like not at work or just, oh my God, I'm out, but I want to watch my boys, so I'm about to go sit in the car. We don't want to inconvenience anybody, so we'll do a like better planning. But again, uh, we thank y'all 
for watching. Um, we thank y'all for watching. Yes, this is me live, and this is what I say on this recorded videos. We thank y'all. We really appreciate y'all. Um, we are like climbing that ladder of subscribers, and we just again want to keep giving y'all uh, content. Um, so thank you. Matthew, you have a beautiful night too. I know I seen your comment. Um, we will have a beautiful night as well. Thank you, Melvin, for tuning in. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Malcolm. Um, and we will see you guys later. Good night. Good night, Peace. guys. Cause it's S and S. S is S and S. It's S and S. S is S and S. Bye guys. Peace. See you in the next video.